There were Renu the prince, Jodi Pala the student, and six other aristocrats, these eight became friends. In due course the Brahmin steward passed away. At his passing, King Disampati lamented, at a time when I have relinquished all my duties to the Brahmin steward and amuse myself, supplied and provided with the five kinds of sensual stimulation, he passes away. When he said this, Prince Renu said to him, Sire, don't lament too much at the stewards. Passing He has a son named Jodipala, who is even more astute and expert than his father. He should manage the affairs that were managed by his father. Is that so, my prince? Yes, sire. 6. The story of the great steward So King Disampati addressed one of his men, Please, mister, go to the student Jodipala, and say to him, Best wishes, Jodipala. You are summoned by King Disampati, he wants to see you. Yes, your majesty, replied that man, and did as he was asked. Then Jodipala went to the king and exchanged greetings with him. When the greetings and polite conversation were over, he sat down to one side, and the king said to him, May you, Jodipala, manage my affairs, please don't turn me down. I shall appoint you to your father's position, and anoint you as steward. Yes, sir, replied Jodipala. So the king anointed him as steward and appointed him to his father's position. After his appointment, the steward Jodipala managed both the affairs that his father had managed, and other affairs that his father had not managed. He organized both the works that his father had organized, and other works that his father had not organized. When people noticed this they said, the Brahmin is indeed a steward, a great steward. And that's how the student Jodipala came to be known as the great steward. 6.1 Dividing the Realm Then the great steward went to the six aristocrats and said, King Disampati is old, elderly, and senior, advanced in years, and has reached the final stage of life. Who knows how long he has to live? It's likely that when he passes away the king makers will anoint Prince Renu as king. Come, sirs, go to Prince Renu and say, Prince Renu, we are your friends, dear, beloved, and cherished. We have shared your joys and sorrows. King Disampati is old, elderly, and senior, advanced in years, and has reached the final stage of life. Who knows how long he has to live? It's likely that when he passes away the king makers will anoint you as king. If you should gain kingship, share it with us. Yes, sir, replied the six aristocrats. They went to Prince Renu and put the proposal to him. The prince replied, Who else, sirs, in my realm ought to prosper if not you? If I gain kingship, I will share it with you all. In due course King Disampati passed away. At his passing, the king makers anointed Prince Renu as king. But after being anointed, King Renu amused himself, supplied and provided with the five kinds of sensual stimulation. Then the great steward went to the six aristocrats and said, King Disampati has passed away. But after being anointed, King Renu amused himself, supplied and provided with the five kinds of sensual stimulation. Who knows the intoxicating power of sensual pleasures? Come, sirs, go to Prince Renu and say, Sir, King Disampati has passed away, and you have been anointed as king. Do you remember what you said? Yes, sir, replied the six aristocrats. They went to Prince Renu and said, Sir, King Disampati has passed away, and you have been anointed as king. Do you remember what you said? I remember, sirs. Who is able to neatly divide into seven equal parts this great land, so broad in the north and narrow as the front of a cart in the south? Who else, sir, if not the great steward? So King Renu addressed one of his men, Please, mister, go to the Brahmin great steward and say that King Renu summons him. Yes, your majesty, replied that man, and did as he was asked. Then the great steward went to the king and exchanged greetings with him. When the greetings and polite conversation were over, he sat down to one side, and the king said to him, Come, 
let the good steward neatly divide into seven equal parts this great land, so broad in the north and narrow as the front of a cart in the south. Yes, sir, replied the great steward, and did as he was asked. All were set up like the fronts of carts, with King Renu's nation in the center. Dantapura for the Kalinas. Padana for the Asakas. Maisidi for the Avantis. Raruka for the Sovaras. Mithila for the Videhas. Kampa was made for the Angas. And Varanasi for the Kasis. These were laid out by the steward. Then those six aristocrats were delighted with their respective gains, having achieved all they wished for, we have received exactly what we wanted, what we wished for, what we desired, what we yearned for. Satapu and Brahmadatta, Vesapu and Bharata, Renu and the two Tahadarathas. These are the seven Bharatas. The first recitation section is finished. 6.2 A good reputation Then the six aristocrats approached the great steward and said, Steward, just as you are King Renu's friend, dear, beloved, and cherished, you are also our friend. Would you manage our affairs? Please don't turn us down. Yes, sirs, replied the great steward. Then the great steward managed the realms of the seven kings. And he taught seven well-to-do Brahmins and seven hundred bathed initiates to recite the hymns. After some time he got this good reputation, the great steward sees Brahma in person. The great steward discusses, converses and consults with Brahma in person. The great steward thought, I have the reputation of seeing Brahma in person, and discussing with him in person. But I don't. I have heard that Brahmins of the past who were elderly and senior, the teachers of teachers, said. Whoever goes on retreat for the four months of the rainy season and practices the absorption on compassion sees Brahma and discusses with him. Why don't I do that? So the great steward went to King Renu and told him of the situation, saying, Sir, I wish to go on retreat for the four months of the rainy season and practice the absorption on compassion. No one should approach me, except for the one who brings my meal. Please do so, steward, at your convenience. Then the great steward went to the six aristocrats to put the same proposal, and received the same reply. He also went to the seven well-to-do Brahmins and seven hundred bathed initiates and put to them the same proposal, adding, Sirs, recite the hymns in detail as you have learned and memorized them, and teach each other how to recite. And they too said, Please do so, steward, at your convenience. Then the great steward went to his forty equal wives to put the same proposal to them, and received the same reply. Then the great steward had a new meeting hall built to the east of his citadel, where he went on retreat for the four months of the rainy season and practiced the absorption on compassion. And no one approached him except the one who brought him meals. But then, when the four months had passed, the great steward became dissatisfied and anxious. I have heard that Brahmins of the past said that whoever goes on retreat for the four months of the rainy season and practices the absorption on compassion sees Brahma and discusses with him. But I neither see Brahma nor discuss with him. 6.3 A discussion with Brahma and then Brahma Sanan Kumara, knowing what the great steward was thinking, as easily as a strong person would extend or contract their arm, vanished from the Brahma realm and reappeared. In the great steward's presence. At that, the great steward became frightened, scared, his hair standing on end, as he had never seen such a sight before. So he addressed Brahma Sanankumara in verse. Who might you be, sir? So beautiful, glorious, majestic. Not knowing, I ask. How am I to know who you are? In the Brahma realm they know me. As the eternal youth. All the gods know me thus. And so you should know me, steward. A Brahma deserves a seat and water. Foot salve, and sweet cakes. Sir, I ask you to please accept. These gifts of hospitality. I accept the gifts of hospitality. Of which you speak. I grant you the opportunity. To ask whatever you desire. 
about welfare and benefit in this life, or happiness in lives to come. Then the great steward thought, Brahma. Sanankumara has granted me an opportunity. Should I ask him about what is beneficial for this life or lives to come? Then he thought, I'm a skilled in what is beneficial for this life, and others even ask me about it. Why don't I ask Brahma about the benefit that specifically applies to lives to come? So he addressed Brahma Sanankumara in verse. I'm in doubt, so I ask Brahma, who is free of doubt. About things one may learn from another. Standing on what, training in what? May a mortal reach the deathless Brahma realm. He among men, O Brahman, has given up possessions. Become one, compassionate. Free from the stench of decay, and refraining from sex. Standing on that, training in that. A mortal may reach the deathless Brahma realm. Sir, I understand what giving up possessions means. It's when someone gives up a large or small fortune, in a large or small family circle. They shave off hair and beard, dress in ochre robes, and go forth from the lay life to homelessness. That's how I understand giving up possessions. Sir, I understand what oneness means. It's when someone frequents a secluded lodging, a wilderness, the root of a tree, a hill, a ravine, a mountain cave, a charnel ground, a forest, the open air, a heap of straw. That's how I understand oneness. Sir, I understand what compassion it means. It's when someone meditates spreading a heart full of compassion to one direction, and to the second, and to the third, and to the fourth. In the same way above, below, across, everywhere, all around, they spread a heart full of compassion to the whole world, abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. That's how I understand compassionate. But I don't understand what you say about the stench of decay. What among men, O oh Brahma, is the stench of decay? I don't understand, so tell me, wise one. Wrapped in what do people stink? Headed for hell, shut out of the Brahma realm. Anger, lies, fraud, and deceit. Miserliness, vanity, jealousy. Desire, stinginess, harassing others. Greed, hate, pride, and delusion. Those bound to such things have the stench of decay. They're headed for hell, shut out of the Brahma realm. As I understand what you say about the stench of decay, it's not easy to quell while living at home. I shall go forth from the lay life to homelessness.